Well, hello and welcome to I Love Gay Today. This is great to be back here. We actually took a little bit of a break this summer. We're back. And what better place to start than in Italy? And we are with our friends Giovanna and Alat from uh, kind of all things LGBT travel, quickie travel, uh, queer bodice. But we'll talk about all that as we go along. And how are you guys? Fine. Thank you. You? Very good. Really yeah, glad yeah. to be here. Yeah. Safe. I, I'm glad. To, it's wonderful to have you here. And this is my first time meeting a lot, but with yeah. Giovanna, you and I have gone. Uh, uh, last time I saw you, of course, was when you and your organization and your team were so instrumental in bringing IGLTA to Milan. Uh, just, Absolutely. Uh, I believe that was Absolutely. about two years ago. Yeah, it was two years ago. It was 2022. And we organized yeah. the local uh, the local activities for IGLTA, you know, for the convention. And also we were um, definitely extremely a leading party within the organization of the convention itself. And because having Milan becoming the location for the, that event, yeah. we were... Uh, we were really involved into into the Met. <laughs> no, it was it was fantastic. It was um, I know everyone had an amazing time, but it was also um, I remember it was really that momentum that you guys brought to the table from Europe and all, you know, and, and so much excitement in, in Europe for, for LGBT travel. And then, you know, people that came in from other parts of the world, but it became one of the largest uh, conventions we had ever had with IGLTA. And it was amazing coming off the pandemic to be able to uh, have that achievement. Yeah, it was. Well, actually, it was a, a big surprise for us too, because as you said, we were just coming out of the pandemic, so we we didn't expect so much, so many people. Yeah. But actually, it was a huge success, and we are still in contact with many many of those journalists, of those uh, buyers we met during the convention, and it was a huge success for us. Yeah, I love that, and and that really tied in at that time with with. Uh, your organization as as a your sales manager for Quickie Travel and um, yeah. but Quickie Travel and you you know and kind of that's always been all things uh, LGBT travel in Italy, and um, but that's been a, a huge part of your foundation. Yeah, let's say that um, actually Quickie Travel is, works a sort of, as a sort of a destination management yeah. for uh, Italy for the LGBTQ plus community, yeah. which means if you decide to travel to Italy then consider quickie travel because we are in a position to support all aspects of your journey in Italy. Yeah. Hotels, transportation, uh, restaurants, whatever it is. And, and also we have special, fantastic walking tours which, which are really considering the importance of the LGBTQ plus history in Italy. Yeah. Um, let's say that our leading uh, our leading idea is let's give Italy a different way of understanding. Let's say we know that everybody knows that Italy is a place of hospitality, a Latin place. You know, everybody wants to travel to Italy. Okay, that's fine. And we are honored of that. But at the same time, what do we do in order to make everyone really accepted and uh, mainly able to to see themselves satisfied with the, their expectations mm -hmm. and um as you know italy is let's say the the place where culture is uh, its major expression 60 percent of unesco places are in italy for example yeah. but if you look at unesco places for example you you must have a different uh, way of uh, approaching them if you are talking in the LGBTQ plus language. Yeah, yeah. I give you an example, Matt, just to be clear about what I say. Uh, if I think of the Vatican museums, for example, in Rome, um, who can imagine that there is a, so much of LGBTQ plus culture there? Mm -hmm. Nobody would even imagine for many reasons, because of the religion, because of the, uh, of the time we are talking about, of the popes and, and whatsoever. But actually, if you if you have a, a walking tour with us, with our gay guides who are extremely knowledgeable about the interpretation of LGBTQ plus uh, um, hints and tips within the St. Peter's, for example, or within the Vatican Museum, it can be really astonishing. I mean, it was astonishing for me. I would never imagine that I can see so many aspects of... Um, 
a, let's say, diversity, but at the same time, I wouldn't say inclusion, unfortunately, at that time. But uh, thinking of Michelangelo, the powerful, um, the powerful effort he did in order to transmit his uh, inner struggles, uh, his uh, inner personality, well, that makes you feel, you know, makes you feel better in order to in, able to understand that, that actually things have happened during centuries but actually people didn't have the opportunity of expressing themselves if not with their own art yeah. and this is their language the language we have been informed with we, have, we are now able to understand if we look with lgbtq plus eyes now I see why you guys have all been so successful. It's the passion that you bring to the table. <laughs> I I loved hearing that, and uh, because because that's really allowed you all to you know kind of really there's a lot going on in LGBT travel in Europe, um, uh, focus you know starting in Italy, but um, now there's an organization you guys are very instrumental in being a part of too called the ELTA and. Uh, Tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, in uh, 2022, uh, we have been involved as founders of uh, ELTA, which is the European LGBTQ Plus Travel Alliance, yeah. which is based in the Brussels. And uh, its main mission is trying to bring together um, different countries in Europe in order to collect best practices in policies concerning diversity, equity, and inclusion for two reasons. Yeah. So this means we try to bring together countries, destinations, uh, hotels, tour operators from different parts of Europe. And our main challenge is Eastern Europe. Yeah. We are also involving Eastern Europe just for because we have this idea that tourism can be a strong, important trailblazer for civil rights. Yeah. So if we are able to talk the same language, even though we come from different places, but we have the same goals and we can share the same ideal uh, points of view or objective, the final obje objective of the reason why we are now, let's say, sitting at the same table, yeah. then we can share a good practice. We can learn a lot from one another. This is the reason why ELTA is organizing the State General of European LGBTQ Plus Tourism every year since 2022, sorry, 2023. Yeah. First year in Milan, second year in Brussels, second year this year, 2024. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, we have been, it was an important success for us. We were not so many, but the contents we had were really unique having people coming uh, from eastern europe from serbia from uh, hungary and talking about the way they are living their realities in their own countries and at the same time sharing this with those countries which are living in a different way western countries with right. which has a different let's say approach to uh, to the let's say all policies concerning equity and inclusion mm -hmm. that it became a really let's say an enjoyable table because mm -hmm. you know we shared so many information so many things and that uh, we had great opportunities of networking it was a great great um event yeah. we are now going out with a new a new bid for 2025 okay and uh, we are making uh, the bid uh, going around europe in order to have the new location or the new candidate for uh, the state general in 2025, we have a couple of ideas, but I will not disclose them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let me uh, can I add one thing there that's really interesting. I mean, Giovanna, it's so it's so great to like because I think for people like me and many people from our community, I'm a person of color and I'm a queer man, and sometimes it's really scary to know where to go and how to navigate when you travel somewhere and you hear stories about places and you don't know both, will my intersectionality be valued and will I feel safe and will I be able to navigate the best of these places? And so sure. I think for a lot of people, including myself, I feel really inspired by what Giovanna does because it, it creates a space for all of us to enjoy the best of travel and not have those fears, you know, number one. Yeah. And the second thing that I thought, you know, is something that's really important for, for me and for all of us, which is, like Jenna said, you know, there's something really amazing about what ELTA and others are doing, which is 
if you can change laws and policies in these countries, mm -hmm. the effects are enormous, right? And we know that there's a clear indicator of more progressive policies and more tourism, of course, right? Stronger GDP growth. We know that private sector tourism companies that are more diverse in their hiring, they're able to really keep and engage a loyal customer base. Yeah. And again, as travelers, even my straight brother and sister-in-law, they only want to go to travel where they know their you know, gay uncle is going to be safe yeah. and, and okay. And so it really matters in so many levels. And to see the communities in these Eastern European countries um, prosper because of the work that's happening here is, is really, really inspiring. Yeah, I agree. I love hearing that. But then and then kind of expanding because that's where um, what we're going to talk about from this point forward is some of the things you've, you you all have done as far as moving outside of that into a bigger a bigger aspect. But before we get the biggest, um, I can't believe it. You guys have, um, at Quickie, you have a Palazzo Moresco now. And um, and a friend of mine has just... Uh, uh, who's on your uh, on the board with Kovatis, Queer Vadis as well. He's a friend of mine uh, that just stayed there recently and I'm um, looking forward to uh, doing the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, uh, this is uh, you know, uh, our CEO idea, Alessio yeah. idea. And um, actually, um, his husband and uh, he decided to create this sort of, uh, how can I say, sort of nest for the LGBTQ plus community, but not only. Yeah. Um, it is located in Santa Marinella, which is 40 kilometers north of Rome, mm -hmm. uh, very close to Civitavecchia, where a lot of cruises arrive. And uh, actually, Palazzo Moresco is a place where cruisers usually go. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a number of... Uh, guests to stay in there even for more than one day uh, or a couple of days and uh, the place is what is beautiful or really beautiful in the place is that not only because it's gay on the so th it has a special openness towards every everyone every possible guest they may have but the way they um they pay attention to detail they pay attention to expect every client expectations and try to well actually having a tour operator in the backstage helps a lot yeah, of course yeah. and um we are now organizing um we have now organized a, a package for october the 9th for some cruisers Nice. belonging to the lgbtq plus community staying with us for the whole day and we organize cooking classes with a, with a gay cook and um, we have a tour boat a tour um, on the boat with uh, gay skippers and so on so it's um it's a nice place to visit but just for everyone yeah. but we have a special eye for the lgbtq plus community oh i can't wait no seriously i, I travel <laughs> enough and i know i will you should that, so. you should uh, matt next time in italy <laughs> <laughs> you have to be there <laughs> exactly but now for the for the big one it's uh and this is this is huge um because I, you're seeing this around the world in different places where um it's now there's a huge effort going on for lgbtq plus certification in the world of travel but you guys are spearheading this uh, uh from your direction as well with queer bodice yeah exactly i will leave the floor to <laughs> to Alap about this but just to give you a couple of uh, yeah. a couple yeah. of uh, tips which are i think extremely interesting Actually, it was during the pandemic in 2020 that we decided to, well, we were completely, you know, <laughs> we were completely uh, staying, sitting at our table, doing nothing. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, we decided, we, we tried to get into the matter of what hotel, what a destination, what a tour operator can do in order to communicate the way they do the, the best practices they they put in place in order to be really um, inclusive and specifically with the LGBTQ plus community. Is there anything which can help them? Can we do something for them? Yeah. Even because the, the, the experience around, not just around Italy, but around Europe in general, is that actually... You visit a place, you visit a destination, you visit a hotel, or you are in touch with a tour operator. But in many, in many cases, they don't even understand which kind of expectation you have. Yeah. Right. Um, and in many times, it's not having a great ideas, but be but pay attention to details. 
Mm-hmm. Pay attention to small things which make the place, which make the destination, or which makes the tour operator more and more hospitable. Yeah, so yeah. this is why we decided to work on a certification which is called the Puyar Vadis. Mm-hmm. And um, actually, there is nothing uh, nothing comparable to, to this yeah. now, in neither in Europe nor I think mm-hmm. in, in the USA, because right. this is a, a real certification. It's not just a training. Yeah. It's sort of certification with a uh, with a specific audit at the end of a, of a training and uh, specific operations within the company so that you get to a final result which is uh, witnessed by a third party, which is re- really objective. Yeah, yeah. Now I shut up. And I <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Gosh, I can't even. But like Giovanna said, you know, I mean, what's so interesting and unique about Queer Vadis is that it is the first international LGBTQ plus DEI certification, right? And mm-hmm. why does that matter, right? Because there's lots of choices we have. But as a tourist and as a traveler, <clears throat> I get to see that logo, see that at businesses and be able to say, I get to bring my authentic self to these places every day. Yeah. That I know that I'm going to show up and these people and, and, and the businesses, the hotels, the destinations, the tour, but they're going to honor you know, the way I want to be addressed they are going to anticipate some of my needs because they're very unique for the LGBT community. Yeah. And it's important that I'm spending a lot of money and I have my family, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a busy a busy uh, weekend of, of, of travel and I want to be able to have a peace of mind, right? Yeah. That I get yeah. to enjoy it. And then, you know, we're all busy and we all, we, we all trying to make them make the best of our, of our experience. And that to me is, you know, it's hard to quantify that peace of mind that, like I said earlier, I get to show up somewhere and know that, if the queer vadis brand is at this uh, tour location or operator, I feel safe. Yeah. I feel protected. I know anything happens, they've got my back, right? So that's kind of one thing that's really important. And on the other hand, you know, queer vadis works with the tour operators, the destinations, the hotels, because as we know, they're really overwhelmed. You know, these are small businesses who are trying to do their best and in an increasingly challenging time for tourism, right? Yeah, yeah. And what queer vadis does is a few things. You know, as Giovanna said, you know, how can through certification, how can these businesses expand their markets, attract a wider, more diverse customer base? Second is really differentiate. Yeah. You know, we have lots of choices. And with Google and TikTok, there's a lots of challenges in getting your brand visible. And to be able to stand out to say we are a leader in inclusivity. And that we are going to, and Queer Vadis works with these um, businesses to do a training and only do a training once. Because if you train and you create sensitivity around LGBT tourists, because of the intersectionality and the expansiveness of our community, you often get to cover lots of different identities and categories. And so you do this training once, and often that's the only training you need to really support and serve a broad spectrum of tourism right yeah. and the thing i think that's really important is as we said earlier there's a social responsibility and comp- compliance here that you know we think is important that environmental social and governance um standards knowing the the world that we live in to to us is important and that we know there's a backsliding of lgbt rights we know that there's a challenge in sustainability and so queer by this kind of every step of the way is there to help tourists like us and the businesses really be able to uh, show up for the future, you know, of tourism. Yeah. I love hearing that. Um, um, and you, and it really does make a difference. Um, it's a, it's a different part of the world that I'll bring up, but uh, last year I went to Toronto for pride and, uh, and my husband and I, we did a road trip. So we drove up. So on our way back, we came through a different way and went through a smaller town of Kingston um, in, in Canada and I'll never forget it because, you know, we just stopped there because I always wanted to see it. But there are all these rainbow, it's the the program they have with the Canadian LGBT Chamber yeah. of Commerce is called Rainbow Registered. And mm. so all throughout town at coffee shops and, and all sorts of different stores is a rainbow yeah. registered in the window. And um, it really makes a huge difference because I never forgot that. I was, it was an immediate uh feeling that Kingston, um, like you said, has my back They're They're, uh, they're very supportive. And, uh, yeah. and they made that very, very clear. And here this yeah. is just a small town in Canada. Yeah. So, I love it. I, I agree. I, yeah. It's I amazing. Applaud the work, I applaud the work you all are doing. Well, thank you. Yeah. And again, it takes, 
you know, and I think the work you're doing and, you know, I think, it, you know, we need all of us to kind of yeah. be in this conversation together because it really matters. Right. And like you said, we know at a time when there's a, when there's a lot of choices when there's lots of places one can go. I also just know that I would much rather support my an LGBT business because they're mm -hmm. part of our family, right? And much rather support them than another business because I know that they've done the hard work yeah. and they've yeah. and they've done what they need, you know, what they need to help people like myself and other parts of the community be able to really enjoy their experience. <clears throat> I love this. I think this is fantastic. And um, I'm going to make sure that when we post this online, we're going to have, uh, you know, not only will we tag all the, all of it, but also we'll have links uh, to place right. so folks can be able to uh, click, click through, discover more. So we'll make sure that uh, hopefully we'll leave no stone unturned when it comes to people being able to discover all the work y'all are doing. All Thank right. you so, so much. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for being here. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all at the next LGBT tourism conference we, we get okay. to together. That's great. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Bye -bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.